Hi friends, I'm Saili Kale. I'm one of the co-founders of Kraku and an alumna of IIM Ahmedabad. In this video, we'll be discussing Dashcat 12. As many of you must have experienced after giving the Dashcat that it was on the uh, slightly tougher side, especially the quant section was difficult. So let us take a look at the two sections. Let us see what should be our expectations, what would be a fair uh, um, like what should be the attempt rate in those kind of questions, what you should look out for, what you should avoid, etc. So, let us take a look at it. So, as I mentioned, this was a difficult section. Generally, what uh, distribution you see is that out of the 22 questions, you should expect around 8 to 10 questions to be on the, uh, 8 to 10 questions should be easy, then uh, moderate should be another 10 questions and uh, say uh, 2 to 4 questions should be hard. Here the distribution was quite opposite, there were more harder questions, there were lesser easier questions. So the entire quant section as such was harder section as such. But over here also what you should always remember is that you should outperform your competitors. It's not an absolute value that you should be aiming to get. It's not that okay I should get 30s or I should get 40s. Your aim should be that whatever even if the cutoff is at 20 okay or 2021, which I expect over here, it should be between 20 to 21 as such a fair cutoff. Even if the cutoff is lower, your idea of what you should basically be thinking is that I should be outperforming others. So when it comes to hard questions, am I outperforming my competitors? When it comes to moderate questions, am I outperforming uh, my competitors? If you rely solely on easy questions, then if you get a hard, harder or difficult quant section, then you will struggle. So always remember, uh, within the three slots that are there for CAT, you can uh, there will there can easily happen a particular slot where the quant section is harder than the other two slots are, or where the quant section is more difficult than expected. So in these kind of scenarios, you basically get to know whether or not you outperform your peers in the moderate questions and on, in the harder questions. If you are not able to do that, you should basically take a look at whether your conceptual understanding is clear, your question uh, picking is proper, uh, you should be also be looking at whether you are able to keep calm under stressful situations. In most of these kind of cases, you start getting stressed out because it is not going as per your expectations. This has happened many times before where the quant section was unexpectedly difficult. So what happens at that point of time is a lot of people com crumble completely. So it should not, that should not happen. Essentially whenever there is a difficult section, you should say that okay, I since this is a difficult section, I should try to get at least 20 to 25 in this. Uh, I should not go into like single digit or in tens as such. If I get to 20 to 25, I will be clearing the cutoff. So that should be the way you should be thinking, not that okay, this is too difficult a section, I can't possibly clear this section. So always remember, it is a, uh, you have to consider what your peer group is going through. You have to basically outperform your peer group. So don't index yourself that I have to get a 40 in quant or I have to get like 60 in quant if you are very, very good in quant. You shouldn't think that way. What you should really think about is that I should outperform my peers. So even at 25, if I am outperforming your, uh, my peers, it shouldn't really matter much. So that is the first thing. The second thing that you should know is that uh, the over here also arithmetic and geometry were essentially the make or break sections. Essentially, there were two easy arithmetic questions, two easy geometry questions. There were a couple of questions if you see the analysis which were actually classified as uh, moderate but which I think are easy questions. The first question where you have to find out the area enclosed is an easy question. It is, you can do it under two minutes. Similarly, in arithmetic also there was one more question which was classified as a moderate question but is in fact an easy question. So there were two easy questions, two uh, in uh, each in arithmetic and geometry which you should have definitely solved and you should have gotten correct. There were six moderate questions in arithmetic and those six moderate questions would have taken you time. Now if you basically realize that uh, this is going to be a low scoring section, you should have reduced the expected attempt rate also and once you reduce mentally reduce the expected attempt rate you should say that okay I should target all the moderate questions and I should make sure that whatever are these hard questions I consider them and I immediately eliminate them. So for example in arithmetic there was a question which is on uh, time and work which there the uh, like the rate of doing work was in fractions. So generally questions like that would take more time to solve even if you got them right they would take a lot of time to solve as such. Similarly, in geometry also there were fairly uh, difficult questions which were harder to solve. So again, basically your aim in tougher section should be, is this a time consuming question? If it is, I should be avoiding it. In algebra, the three questions were moderate to hard. There was one moderate question, there were two hard questions. Again, over here also it was very conceptual in nature. So basically, if you understood that, okay, I have to minimize the uh, denominator to maximize the overall value, 
if you try to minimize, you basically needed simple uh, quadratic equation formulae to actually minimize. If you put in the time uh, required, even though it was a harder question, you could have solved it. So basically, the reason why the many of these questions were harder were not because they were difficult to solve or they were very conceptual, but each question would require you about three minutes to solve, especially the harder ones as such. Number system, this one hard question that was there, very hard to figure out how many numbers were divisible by both 4 and 6. The minute I saw it, I realized that it is going to take at least 5 minutes to solve. You should absolutely skip uh, enumeration kind of questions which are going, where you have more than 3-4 cases of enumeration, you should absolutely skip those kind of questions because they are going to take a lot of time and they are just not worth the time as such. So always remember any kind of enumeration questions or any kind of question where you feel that this is going, I have to consider many cases, you should not attempt in the first group. PNC probability, that question on the lattice uh, number of parts and again, again I felt this, uh, the question was a hard question, but also it was a time consuming question. Again, you have to consider separate cases. So if you solve these two questions or you try to solve these two questions, these two questions could have been actually uh, in terms of time, they would have been like four of the moderate questions from the uh, arithmetic or geometry. So consider it, right? Uh, in arithmetic and geometry, you will have four questions that you could have solved and with higher accuracy because when you have enumeration of cases, you miss one case, your answer is entirely wrong. Same with PNC, you miss one case uh, of uh, considering, the answer is entirely wrong. So here there is low accuracy and high time that is required. In arithmetic and geometry, it is uh, high accuracy and lesser time that is required. So even picking which harder questions to do also matters a lot. In modern maths, there was a logarithms question. I thought it was very easy. And I also thought it was easy because essentially it was a question that you could do it under the minute, under one and a half minutes at such. So basically, if you have a question that you can do under one and a half minutes, that question gives you time to actually spend that extra time on other harder or moderate questions. So remember here, 22, 21 would have been a fairly decent score to have. So basically, you need like eight to nine questions correct. You should minimize the number of mistakes as such. So with that in mind, you should just think that where would I, uh, which are the best questions that I must attempt, which are the best questions that I should uh, uh, like uh, focus on and which questions I should definitely skip. Once you have a good idea of that, your attempt as such would improve. Now, I would suggest go back, take a look at each of those questions. Remember, when you go back now, it will, it will not be very difficult to solve the questions. The questions are not unsolvable or unrealistically difficult. What was difficult is that every single question would require 3 plus minutes. And when you have 22 questions in uh, 40 minutes, 3 plus minutes per question becomes unreasonably hard. So what is difficult is not that it is very uh, unsolvable, it is just the time constraint that you are under. So with that also, also think in which question could I have saved time? Which question did I unnecessarily attempt where I lost a lot of time? So when you have a good idea about, about that, that will also help you in question selection in the next upcoming mocks. So that is what I have to say about the quant section. Let's take a look at the LRDI section. I felt this was moderate difficulty level. I felt, I felt in fact this was one of the sections where I feel that this is exactly like what uh, I expect CAT to have, where there will be two six question sets. One six question set will be difficult. One six question set will be easy. But looking at the set from a distance, you won't know which one is the easy one, which is the, is the harder one. What happens often is that uh, which six questions that you choose determines how much, how well your mock goes. If you choose the harder six question set, your mock attempt is miserable. If you choose the easier six question set, your mock attempt is very good. Uh, so basically, then it basically comes to how do you actually select. Often times when you just look at the question, you are not able to get, gauge how much time it is going to require to solve, how difficult it, was to, uh, it will be to uh, solve. Over here, you had two sets. One was the Wordle based set, which was essentially arrangement. You have to consider different arrangements. And from that, you have to figure out which are the correct guesses, which are the correct uh, order of things. The second one was a gem set. When I looked at this gem set, I felt this was going to be a complex set. So I chose the Wordle one because firstly, I was also interested in it. I also, felt, uh, I, I also feel that arrangement is a strength of mine. But I realized that when arrangement comes or any form or type of arrangement comes in a cat-like scenario, those sets will never be trivially easy or never be simple as such. So always do not dismiss six question sets offhand thinking that this is difficult or this is uh, impossible to solve. In this, if you did the gem set, you would have had a much better attempt. You would actually outperform your peers quite a bit because this was a set you could have actually done under 10 minutes. Uh, easy peasy set. On the other hand, the Wordle set would have required you more than 15 minutes to solve. So essentially, uh, which how your attempt was essentially depended on which of these two sets you would choose. 
and this is true even for actual CAD because you have only four sets and of which you are going to at best solve three and in uh, most cases solve two which of the two six question sets cho you choose actually matters a lot so I would suggest thinking a bit deeply about how much time each question is going to take to solve seeing the questions once to see what is the level of uh, this that is required do you have to consider multiple cases are multiple solutions possible so just take a look at that also when you are actually considering how difficult a particular set is also the four uh, between the two four question sets also there was one very easy set uh, i will tell you from experience that the charts based sets and table based sets generally will be the easier four question sets so there it won't be that difficult to make the right choice charts based four question sets you should never skip because they are always on the easy side so in this case also the spider chart set was very easy but it had one difficult question which was based on Venn diagrams but apart from that the remaining three questions were fairly easy on the other hand the date set was fairly difficult in fact I feel that the date set was actually much difficult even than the wordle base set and would have taken a lot of time to solve so of these this is the one that you should have definitely skipped because it was definitely not worth the time but between them, I think the ideal uh, like uh, ideal attempt would have been the gem set plus the spider chart and at least some questions from the wordle base set. If that you were able to do, then that would have been fantastic. In fact, uh, always do not assume that the four question set will be easier than the six question set. Some six question sets are actually fairly easy. So you should keep your mind open and actually see the set. Try to see how difficult it is. Your ability to judge the difficulty level will also matter a lot in the actual cap. So with that, I'll leave you with the LRDI analysis for Dashcat 12. Maruti will be doing the VAIC analysis for Dashcat 12. Thank you. Hi friends, uh, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, I'll be doing the analysis for the verbal section of Dashcat 12. Dashcat 12, uh, the verbal section I felt was definitely on the medium to hard side. This was definitely not an easy section. Sometimes you feel that uh, this section is easy, but I didn't get that vibe from this. Uh, overall, I felt uh, there were two RCs which are definitely uh, difficult to read. There were uh, RCs where uh, I was not able to really concentrate for a couple of reasons. Probably it was uh, the choice of uh, the topics. I have my interests. There are some passages or some topics where I am able to concentrate better. Over here, I felt uh, there were two topics. This was uh, one about a novel called Invisible Man. It was a slightly old novel which uh, discusses uh, 1960s or 1950s USA, which I felt uh, I was not... Uh, enough informed about uh, that country of that time so I was not able to concentrate um, and many of the uh, phrases uh, were something that I was encountering for the first time so I had difficulty in actually reading this similarly even uh, a slightly philosophical uh, essay on people and how they interpret luck uh, was about this moral luck with this also I found to be slightly on the difficult side with respect to reading but there were two topics which were based on uh, current affairs both of them I felt were easy to read there was one on uh, uh, Donald Trump and there was one on uh, US economy. Both of them I felt uh, uh, quite comfortable reading. I could read it once and I could understand the gist of it. But the questions in the first one I felt were slightly uh, on the difficult side, slightly medium. Uh, but again, this is a standard RC that you can expect in CAT, this kind of RCs. So that is the reason I was saying that it, this is slightly on the medium side. And the essay on Donald Trump, I felt uh, the questions also were fairly easy. There was only one question which was uh, slightly tricky. But overall three questions I think were definitely manageable quite easily. So overall if you are looking at it because there were two passages which I felt were hard to read and uh, my I got very tired while I was reading them. I was saying that uh, the RC section was slightly on the medium to hard side. But again it depends on your interest. If you are interested in philosophy, if you are interested in uh, novels then uh, probably you would find one of the two essays that I found difficult to be slightly on the easier side. Coming to verbal. Uh, I like para summaries because uh, I know how to answer para summaries and one of the tricks that I used to identify the correct answer in para summaries is look at the options and if I am able to rule out any option that is good uh, and say if I am left with two or three options I try to distinguish uh, one option from the other even though the options uh, sound similar to each other I try to figure out what is the essential key difference between say option B and option C once I am able to identify the difference I try to figure out whether that is uh, correct or not according to the passage Using that, uh, I can identify which of the option best summarizes the passage. For example, one of the key things, uh, key tricks that people use for para summaries is uh, changing the adjectives. So, for example, if somebody says that uh, in the para summary, if it says that many people eat uh, fish and in the summary it is given that uh, everyone eats fish or something like that, where it seems similar but it is not actually same. 
now when you are reading it for the first time you won't uh, immediately identify that okay the passage and the summary are different but if you compare two options you can easily identify that one option is saying everyone eats fish and the other one is saying uh, some many people eat fish then you can identify that this is the difference and according to the passage the second option is correct and not the first option that trick i use for para summaries and using that i was able to get uh, all the para summaries correct uh, para jumbles in general i am not very strong at it uh, so i think probably one of that reason uh, i found some of the para jumbles to be slightly tricky in general para jumbles will have a lot of uh, possibilities it can be either 4 3 2 1 or 2 1 3 4 you know that uh, there are 24 possibilities and even if you are able to identify that uh, there are these two sentences 4 and 3 which come one after the other even using that additional information you can't really pinpoint the correct answer so that is one reason why i find para jumbles to be slightly tricky uh, over here i felt the para jumbles were not very difficult all the sentences in the para jumbles were fairly small and you can easily get one or two connections uh, but final answer i felt was slightly uh, not very straightforward wherein there was no very easy para jumble that was the reason i was saying this is on the medium side but definitely not difficult because uh, the sentences were, were short and you can easily make one or two connections in every para jumble so that is the reason i was saying this is on the medium side odd one out i felt was slightly tricky one odd one out i think was easy but another one was tricky the trick that i used to solve odd one outs uh, in a quick manner is by identifying any two sentences which are connected so out of the five sentences one two three four five if i'm able to figure out that okay one and three are connected one comes immediately after three then i don't care about uh, the actual order in which uh, the remaining three come i just know for sure that the correct answer will not be one or three the correct answer has to be one of two four and five and then again i try to find at least one more pair between two four and five say two and five i know that two and five are related one comes after the other then i would put the answer as four that is the trick i use normally it works but over here i was not able to get those connections very quickly i was able to rule out two sentences that okay say one and three are related but amongst the remaining three i was not able to get a good sense of which one is the odd one out that is why i felt this was slightly on the trickier side overall i would say this section is definitely on the medium to hard side and anybody who is looking to do very well somebody who's trying to score say 80 85 percentile should be targeting 25 marks 20 to 25 marks in this section which i think is definitely possible if you put in uh, some effort.